Today we're going to be dealing with counting surjective or onto functions. Okay, so um, just a quick um, uh, revisit. We have that a function is where every element in the input domain has to match with exactly one element in the output codomain. A surjective or onto function, every element in the output is mapped to by at least one element uh, in the input. So for example, let's uh, say that there are m elements here in the domain and there are n elements here in the codomain. Well, if m is less than n, let's say for example that uh, there are only two elements here, well it is impossible uh, that a function can be surjective here because there are fewer elements in the domain than there are in the codomain, so it is not possible that these two can map to at least one of those three. If m equals n, so for example if we have three elements in the domain and three in the codomain, well then actually, yes, that could be on two, we could have uh, uh, like that, um, but it's actually bijective um, as well because um, it's surjective and injective and we'll deal with that one in the next video. So what we're really interested in, um, in this particular video, is when there are, where m is greater than n, i.e. there are more elements in the domain than there are in the codomain, and basically the question always becomes, with these extra elements, where do they go and how do we count them? Okay, so um, anyway, let's, let's just have a quick look, um, because in actual fact there are many overlaps between counting surjective functions and counting the number of ways uh, of distributing m distinct objects among n people. So let's just have a, a quick look. So let's imagine that we have uh, here uh, m, or well in this case five distinct objects, whatever the objects are, um, and here we have for example three boxes or three people or whatever. Well the number uh, where each of the person or box must receive at least one object, this little puzzle is identical to the surjective problem that we're about to talk about, where, for example, we have the domain here is A, B, C, D, E, and the codomain is 1, 2, 3, and we ask um, how many functions are there uh, which are surjective, i.e. where at least uh, one of these maps to each one of these. So it's, uh, they're identical puzzles. And to, you, to solve both of them, we use the Stirling number of the second kind. And this is the formula for the Stirling number of the second kind, which does look a little bit horrific, but it's not. Where this n is the number of elements in the codomain, n, and m is the number of elements in the domain. And basically, if we want to find out how many surjective functions there are between the m elements in the domain and the n elements in the codomain, we have to use the Stirling number of the second kind, remembering that m must be greater than n, um, because otherwise it would be bijective or there cannot be any surjective. So um, let's just um, basically give a, an example. Um, so let's imagine um, that the uh, we have A, B, C, and D in our uh, domain, and we have F, G, and H in our codomain, and we could say, um, you know, identically, we could say that these are four distinct objects, and we could say these are three people or three boxes. It's exactly the same puzzle. Okay, so how would we use the Stirling formula? Well, basically, M in this case is going to be four, and N in this case is going to be three. So all we do is we plug that into the Stirling formula, and then we get basically three to the power of four minus three C one two to the power of four, add 3c2 times 1 to the power of 4, and minus, I mean, we don't need to put this in, but I'll put it in anyway, just in case anybody uh, wants to, to follow for completion. And that is equal to the number of subjective functions. Well, 3 to the 4 is 81, minus 3c1 is 3, times 2 to the 4, add 3c2 is also 3, times 1 to the 4, which is 1, and obviously that is 0, which equals 81 minus... 48 add 3, which equals 36. So in this particular example here, there are 36 
surjective functions from this domain here, which has four elements, to this codomain here, um, which has three elements. Now, in case you're thinking, well, this, this doesn't really make any sense. In actual fact, it does, because we can look at this um, and, and at least get some vague idea as to why this Stirling formula, uh, Stirling number works. So let, let's just uh, put this back in here. So we have A, B, C, and D, uh, and here we had F, G, and H. Okay, and the answer was three to the power of four minus three times two to the power of four, add three times one to the power of four. That's the number of surjective functions. Okay, well, let's imagine that there was, we, we forgot about uh, surjective functions and there's no restriction. How many mappings would there be if they could map to anything? Well, clearly this one can map to any of the three and this one can map to any of the three and this can map to any of the three and this can map to any of the three. So that's where we get the three to the power of four from. That's if there were no restrictions. What happens if one of them is empty? Let's say f is empty. Well, basically um, the probability that one of these goes to here is two thirds. So the probability that they all go um, to there is two thirds to the power of four, and so therefore, given that we know there are three to the four mappings, well, that basically means that there are two to the four cases where f is empty, and we have to multiply that by three because there could be a case where g is empty and a case where h is empty, and that is where we get this bit from. And then finally, well, what we've done is we've actually double counted because in calculating the number of um, functions where f is empty, We've also calculated the number of functions where f and g are empty, so we have to add that back in, which is this bit here. So it does sort of vaguely make um, some sort of uh, sense. Okay, so now before we move on to the, uh, the JE main question, uh, there is a fairly common question uh, that we can answer by inspection. So let's just uh, draw a little thing here, and let's say that there are m elements in here. And let's just say there are two elements here in the codomain. Um, and the question often asks, how many surjective functions are there between the domain here and uh, uh, the codomain here? Well, we can use the Stirling formula. So we would say, OK, well, basically there are 2 to the power of m minus 2c1, 1 to the power of m, which is 2 to the m minus 2. Um, which is the correct answer. That is how many surjective functions there are between uh, this domain and, and this codomain. But in actual fact, if we look at this, this is actually obvious, because if you think about it, it doesn't matter how many elements there are in here, there are only two possibles whereby it's not surjective, and that's if all of them map to one, or if all of them map to two. All of the other ones, which is basically two to the power of m functions, will be surjective. So we could do by inspection that any domain of m elements mapping to 2, there will always be 2 to the m minus 2. That's just a little bit of a sidetrack. It is quite a common uh, question in, uh, in Maths Olympiad. So now let's get on to the JE main question anyway. Here it is. Um, anybody wishes to do it, please uh, pause the video now. OK, so we have basically A, B, C, D and E is our domain, and that clearly has m equal to 5. Uh, which is the number of elements in the domain, and that maps to 1, 2, 3, 4, which has n equal 4. There are four elements uh, in the domain. And basically, the restriction, they're making this even harder. They're not just asking us how many surjective functions there are between uh, r and s. They're actually adding a restriction, which does make it more complicated, that f cannot map a to 1. OK, so the way we're going to do this, this is our plan of attack. Firstly, let's how, see how many uh, surjective functions there are ignoring this. Then let's see how many of the functions have A mapping to one. And then we take one from the other, and that leaves us with how many surjective functions there are such that f of A is not equal to one. OK, so first of all, let's use the, uh, the Stirling number and... Um, work out how many functions there are with m equals 5 and n equals 4. Well, that would be 4 to the power of 5. Take away 4c1 times 3 to the power of 5. Add 4c2 times 2 to the power of 5 minus 4c3 times 1 to the power of 5, which equals uh, 1024 minus 4 times uh, 3 to the power of 5 is uh, 243. Add... Uh, 4 times 4c2 is 4 times 3 over 2, which is 6, times uh, 2 to the 5 is 32, 
takeaway 4c3 is, is uh, 4 times 1 to the 5 is 1 uh, and all of that lot 1024 take away um, 972 add uh, 192 take away 4 equals 240 so we know that there are 240 surjective functions from r to s if we don't have this uh, con constraint that f of a cannot map uh, to 1. OK, now what about when f of a maps to 1? Now we actually have to do this in two steps. OK, step 1 um, is that, let's, let's just redraw this again because this is really important. So we've got a, b, c, d and e and we've got here 1, 2, 3 and 4. So basically we're trying to find out how many surjective functions there are where a does map to 1. So either A, uh, this one is the only element that maps to 1, which means that we are left with these four elements, must map to these three, and that is again a different surjective function that we're going to have to calculate, or B, one of these, B, C, D, or E, also maps to 1, and then we are left with the other three, whatever the other three are, having a bijective function between whatever b c and uh, b c and d for example or two three and four now basically as we will look at in the video tomorrow the number of bijective functions that there are so let's say uh, between a three element and a three element the number of bijective functions there are basically is three choices two choices and one choice which is three factorial and we have that either b c d or e could map to 1 as well as a, so that's times 4. So the number of uh, surjective functions where b, c, d, or e also map to 1 as well as a is basically equal to 4 times 3 factorial, which is, um, uh, sorry, 4 times 3 factorial, which is 24. The second case is where a maps to 1, but B, C, D and E don't map to 1. So let's just redraw that bit. And we basically now have B, C, D and E mapping to 2, 3 and 4 as a subjective function. Well, again, we have to use the Stirling formula, but this time with M equals 4 and N equals 3. Uh, and basically there we have 3 to the power of 4 minus 3 times 2 to the power of 4 add 3 times 1 to the power of 4. Uh, which equals uh, 3 to the 4 is, uh, well, we've already done that one in our example before, wasn't it? That was uh, 81 take away uh, 48 and 3, which equals 36. OK, so basically we know that, just to confirm, so we have 36 cases where A maps to 1 and the others do not map to 1, and we have 24 cases where A maps to 1 and one of the other one maps to 1 as well, uh, and we have 240 cases in total. So therefore, the answer to our question, which is the total number of on two functions where A does not map to 1, is equal to 240 take away 24 take away 36, which equals 180. Um, it's not an easy one, that. Uh, does need a, a little bit of uh, thinking about. Now, in the next video, we are going to look at um, bijective functions, uh, which are quite easy. And also, we're going to include in that surjective, or onto functions, where the domain and codomain are the same size, because they are far easier doing it that way than doing it this way. OK, well, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the Gresty Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.